to my YouTube channel. How long has it been? Long time. Why? Um, because I've not been well. I have, though. Like, I've been healing, but that's the thing. Because I've been healing, I have not had the energy to be a human. I've just had the energy to survive. I had the energy to keep myself alive. Yeah, so, like, I had the energy to survive as a human, you know? But, like, to try as a human just wasn't... I wasn't capable of that lately. No. Oh, let me tell you guys about my manifestations lately because, yo, life is literally what you make it. Like, it's not even funny at this point. Remember how I told you guys I did like a whole vision board and then I like had this all in my notebook and stuff? So I did that and I really needed a new mattress because the mattress I've had, I've had since 2017. I saved up $800 and I felt like a badass bitch because I was only 18. I had my $800 and I went to Ikea and I redid my bedroom my mattress was super old so i really needed a new bed my bed was broken and like there was just like no comfortable position anymore and like it was to the point where like my i was like caved in because the mattress was honestly like this thing it's like from ikea and i only had eight eight hundred dollars like my mattress was probably like two hundred dollars like it got to the point where he didn't even want to sleep on the bed like he was sleeping on his dog bed so like that's what i was like oh i've been really wanting one of those beds that are like the I have really bad acid reflux and so like I'm I have stomach ulcers I've mentioned it's hard to sleep because it burns then this burn that I'm just like I am so uncomfortable I was like those that, that bed would pretty much like solve my issue so I was like yeah, well I need that so I'm gonna fucking manifest that I have the money to get that and funny enough I okay so I need this bed right sorry I got totally disconnected for a second from my brain so my friend mariah's mom got that bed weirdly enough so she and i didn't know she was getting a new bed like i had no idea about any of this and so i'm just there that day and she's like oh yeah my mom's getting a new bed and so she's like bringing down the bed and we're gonna switch out the beds and then i'm gonna get rid of my bed then i got her old mattress her old bed like isn't that so fucking dope like i was so grateful and it's like twice the thickness of my old mattress it's fucking awesome i'm so happy and it's really comfortable and anytime i had to sleep over at her house i always slept really well because i also really like to mattress but i really also think it's just the fact of sleeping with someone who you love when your best friend is next to you you like wake up from like a i cut out the back the part that just uh because it was true warning so uh i removed that joke sorry when you sleep next to your best friend and you have a nightmare wake up and you're like but then you look over and your best friend's right there and your best friend's dog and then your bubbles is right there and then they're just like it's just such a nice little moment and they're like you know what it's fine that was just a memory that was just a memory you know like the body keeps the scorebook it taught me i'm suffering from memories and after i heard it like that it completely changed my mindset on life like the way i deal with my flashbacks and stuff because before flashbacks it's still like i mean i know it's a memory but like it still seems like the the it just still sounds intense, you know? Like, I feel like I've gone through this kind of weird thing where, like, when I first started therapy, right? I started therapy and I used very vague wording for trauma. Like, I would have said, like, okay, I can't think of an example right now. Okay, like, flashbacks and memories. Let's use that. Let's say I would say, I'm having a memory. She would be like, okay, that is a flashback. So you start off therapy saying it's a memory. Your therapist is like, let's add seriousness to that because it deserves a certain amount of attention because it's a flashback. So we're gonna call it a flashback, not a memory. So then it's a flashback and then it's like a flashback, flashback, flashback. And then all of a sudden the word flashback is like your entire life, everything. And this word is like freaking imprinted in your freaking eyeballs at that point everything you look through you just see the letters flashback because the entire world is a flashback trigger at some point so you start off with random little memories starting off right so you call them memories and you're like these memories are just randomly popping up and they're really ruining my day and then your therapist is like that's a flashback it's a flash and so you're like oh really need to start being more cautious with my wording and start saying like I instead of you for outside conversations because it gets me into a lot of situations in a situation like this it's not that the whole world does this no like the whole world doesn't live life like I do I live life like I do and then other people have the freedom and choice to relate to how I live life but that is up to that individual it is not up to me to say we live life this way it is I live life this way and you can go like, you know, I remember like in kindergarten, how like, if you knew the end, like I was that kid. If I rose my hand and you didn't call on me and I knew the answer and then that kid got the answer right. I was like, 
<clears throat> full hatred for that person. Now, the older I've gotten and the more I've watched human beings be human beings, especially children, I've realized how you really don't hide your emotions when you're a child. You might think you are because you're having the thought process in your head of like, yo, that was so unfair. Yeah, I know that was so unfair. Also, see, that's another thing I gotta stop doing, right? Because humanity that does not have DID does not have conversations in their head like, yo, did you know this? Yeah, did you hear that? Yeah, yo, did you hear that moment? Y'all don't do that. Did I even update whatever this was about? What's wrong? You wanna get down? But yeah, I guess I was just like kind of updating you guys on my life. Oh, I was thinking about how human beings are without DID and like the way that their brains are inside their head. So all in all, I don't really remember the whole vibe of this beginning of the YouTube video because now it's probably been like three minutes since I stopped talking when Alexa went off and I forgot everything that I was even talking about at this point. But all in all, I've been doing well. I've just been healing a lot. And the way I've been doing that is by forcing myself and stop thinking that I hope I heal or want to heal. I've really changed the wording I've used in my head to kind of force myself to do it more. And I've been saying more like, I am healing. Like that's it. Like I am healing. I am working on it. Very direct. Good job, me more. Very direct. Just like, this is what's happening. Like, I'm done. Like, this is what I'm doing. And it's really helped. And just like really writing in my notebook, stretching. Oh my God. I start. I got this chakra yoga thing. I started doing a lot of sacral chakra stretches because I've never been able to touch my toes. And I found out that's actually a sacral chakra stretch. And if you can't touch your toes, makes sense, right? If you know, if you follow me on TikTok, you know what I'm trying to say. I can touch my toes now because I've been doing that and I've been releasing a lot. I've been releasing a lot. Visual I've really dug into it. I never really understood it before. Like when my therapist would talk about it, I'd be like, mm, I don't like this, Kim. I don't want to do this. And so I really wouldn't do it the whole way through. Um, or I'd like mess it up on purpose because I'd be so uncomfortable. But I started doing it by myself instead, like while I'm stretching that specific area that helps open up those traumatic memories. And I've just been going in. Like I'm just like, I'm doing this. Like I'm done. And it's weird. There are certain things that no matter how badly I'm like, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. My brain still tells me you're not ready. You know, like there's certain things that I want to release that I'm like, I just, I don't want to deal with this anymore. And I realized my technique does not work for everything because there are certain things that my I cannot visualize removing yet. And I mean, that really just means I'm not ready, right? And so I have to trust myself. I have to trust my system. I have to trust the way that my healing journey has been going and just trust that eventually I will be okay to get, remove it and get rid of it, which I really hope is soon, you know, because, uh, I'm trying to get the fuck off this uh, healing path. I'm trying, I mean, I know I'm gonna be healing for the rest of my life, but I'm trying to get to a stable point. Like I wanna be stable. I know I'm pretty stable now. I'm very high functioning. I'm very aware of that, but I'm not like my friends level of high functioning human beings at my age. I'm not, all of my friends are also not doing it fully the healthy way, the way that I'm trying to get to, but they are also trying to get to it as well. So that means we're both on the trying path. I gotta stop, I gotta stop uh, comparing myself to others. See, this is what healing is like. You start going down the bad path of comparing something in your brain after repeating it all the time, right? Because normally, well, the way it's gone for me is I would start saying something like that and I would go through the whole thing and then I'd feel like shit about it after, right? I'd be like, damn, like I just compared myself and you're right, like I'm failing at life, I suck. Then, you know, a week or so would pass or maybe I'm in the shower a couple hours later. I'm like, wow, that really made me feel like hell. Like, why did I do that to myself, right? Like I should really stop being so mean to myself. So then slowly, a couple months later, you're able to say the whole thing and immediately instead of waiting 24 hours a week or whatever immediately you remember and you're just like yo stop like why did you just do that to yourself right so you catch it faster then you start catching yourself in between as i just did i'm going down the path and then that little bell in my head is like ding, 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 stop 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 so then i stop next eventually at some point in my life hopefully it will be the thought of going down that path will come up or i'll say a couple words or whatever and i'll stop myself immediately before i make myself feel bad so i won't have to comfort myself after i just will never get to that level and then eventually hopefully i just won't have them as often or at all you know like that's healing it's being realistic with it too i can't expect myself to do it immediately when i just set my mind to something you when you set your mind to something 
you still have to program your mind to do it, you know? So that's really what I've been doing is just reprogramming my brain to do what I want for myself, what makes me happy, instead of allowing it to be programmed to make other people happy. That's what I've been doing. I've been reprogramming my brain because it's my brain and I'm tired of it being controlled by other people. I'm tired of my body being controlled by other people. I'm tired of my life being controlled by other people. It's my life and I'm taking it back. I feel like my TikTok has definitely gone from like, I have DID, but I have a full-time job and it's possible to this is what DID is like, not like the movies, to I'm gonna make jokes about my trauma and the things I'm going to back kind of to like healing-ish vibe. And now it's just like, this is it. This is it. Like, this is what we're doing with our life. I'm, we are full mode forward. This is life. It sucks, but it's also absolutely, like, I just feel like it's, a, I'm on such a different vibe. Like, you know, the other day I was like listening to Serious Joy, which I've mentioned a couple times. He's this astrologer, Christopher Witecki, that I listen to. Serious Joy, S-I-R-I-U-S, Serious Joy, J-O-Y. Search on YouTube. He was, he talks about, what is he talking about? Listen to Serious Joy. Damn, it's on a roll. That's what happens when I get distracted. I listen to Serious Joy, healing, just... Oh, I was stretching. I was doing yoga and I was listening to Serious Joy and he was talking about start visualizing your future. Like, what would you want your future to look like? And I've been asked that question hundreds of thousands of times, right? You get asked that question in school. You get asked that question when you start working at places. What is your five-year plan? Everywhere, everywhere you go, you know, even your friends, your parents, your siblings, your cousins, your aunts and uncles, your grandma, everyone asks you, what are you going to do with your future? How many times in your life have you been asked that question? And I've at times have, ans have had answers. I want to be a cosmetology instructor. I want to be a hairstylist. Those have been my concrete answers when it comes to my future because your future is always career path is really what I'm trying to get to. Then I was like, I want to be a psychologist. I want to help people. I want to study brain neurology, whatever, neuroscience. I've been asked that question so many times in my life and I've always had a very broad answer in a way, you know, like even saying I want to be a cosmetologist. I'm not saying what salon I want to work at. I'm not saying what type of salon I want to work at. I'm not saying if I want to go into color or if I want to go into cutting or if I want to do texture, you know, like there's so many options. It's a very broad answer. And for the first time I heard that he's talking about it, you know, it's like a morning podcast he does every morning and he updates you on the astrology for the day. That part you do pay for, but it's honestly worth it. He does pay you. This is not an ad, just so you guys know. This isn't an ad. I've just been listening to him for about two years now and he's just been very helpful in my healing journey. He also does this thing of 40 days of self-love in like August and I did that and that in itself was a huge breakthrough for me. So he's just been a really big part of my healing journey. That's why I'm talking about him. He's not, I don't know him. This is not an ad. Like it's nothing like that. I just want to make sure that it's like, I'm genuinely just saying like it has helped me. So it might help you. He also sends you text messages throughout the day. If you do the paying thing, like his page. Um, and that's what gives me the most comfort is his text messages because like, they'll like tell you about energy switches or something. And I'm very in tuned. Apparently I didn't really know this before. Um, but like I knew because I've been told by, you know, like my mom and dad's like friends or like shamans, um, things like that. I've been told, but, or like my aunt, you know, like, but it's not until you start doing the research and you start adding up your feelings to the dates and the moon cycles and the mer like Mercury retrograde. I was born during a Mercury retrograde. All of my attempts have been during Mercury retrograde because Mercury retrograde makes you look at all of the darkest things you hate about yourself. When you're born during Mercury retrograde, you will have to relook at all those bad things. And if you already have things that you hate about yourself, like because things have happened to you or whatever, you're going to see that more intensely. So you're going to hate yourself times a million. I've become, I've been aware of how much more in tuned I am to astrology. And that has also helped me a lot because I am able sometimes to, I find strength in the days when I find out that like, oh, this is opposing this. So you might have childhood trauma things come up today a little bit more intensely so that I feel more prepared. I'm like, okay, I should stretch more today because if more comes up, I need to be at a more relaxed state. I need to do a little bit more self care today just in case something goes wrong. Not when something goes wrong, not after the situation occurs because sometimes I do this, right? And maybe the childhood trauma that comes up is a memory that I've already dealt with so that I don't really have that serious situation, but I'm still prepared just in case it is something more intense. So that's why astrology has really helped me. And it's not for everyone, of course. It, it is up to you. I was raised with spirituality with my parents. Like they're very open-minded. If I had a fever, my dad's like putting crystals on me or printing out this paper with this metal thing and a pencil that you rub if you have a headache. Like, like that's the type of 
stuff that I was raised with. So for me, spiritu spirituality, it's always been a really large part of my life. I just wasn't invested in it. And I decided to invest in something, you know, I was always told by like shamans or like my aunts who are into spirituality and stuff, you know, like you need to find something to believe in. I realized by healing that I believed in nothing. I believed in nothing but failure. I believed in nothing but pain. So I started looking for something to believe in and it really does help me. That's kind of the thing that I was trying to get at, I think. Originally talking about astrology. Oh, I was stretching and I was listening to uh, Sirius Joy's podcast, Christopher Wojtek's podcast, and he says, what do you envision your future as? And for the first time, I had a concrete answer. It wasn't it wasn't a broad answer like, I wanna be a cosmetologist, I wanna be a cosmetology instructor. No, I said, I wanna be an artist who paints paintings that give them, that give the people who have them in their home so much joy, so much good energy, so much healing energy, so much white light that my paintings end up helping people heal. That is such, an, such a direct answer. And I had it immediately. It wasn't an answer that it was like, oh, you know, it could be a little bit of this or it could no, it was a fluid immediate answer and it filled my body with this like warm tingly like happiness but, and I was like yeah that's what I want and then he says what type of career do you want for yourself what is going to be your career and I was like mental health advocate Im immediately I was like I want to be an in-between like what's your name <laughs> Um, sorry, I had to look up their names because I was put on the spot and I always forget names, times, dates, all of the important stuff. Specifics when I'm put on the spot like that, I put myself on the spot because I was like, oh, their names are, and even though I was already saying them in my head, if I would have just said their names and then like, I want to be like them instead of their names are, I would have been fine. But I set myself up for failure by saying their names are, and I gave myself anxiety. So I should have not done that. But Kathy Buckley and... Brene Brown. I want to be like an in-between of Kathy Buckley and like Brene Brown. Like that's kind of like, and immediately I was already thinking that. Like I want to be an in-between. I want to make healing funny. I want to make the pain funny and also fully understand the severity of it. I want to help people not be against healing the way I was for so long because I was so afraid. I want to be that. I want to be an in-between of Kathy Buckley and Brene Brown. I want to write a book. I started writing a book. Like what? But, and I want to sell these paintings. Like I said, like I want to sell these paintings that help people heal, that bring people joy, that when they look at it, they can remember there's hope that it doesn't have to be all this black cloud all around you that just suffocates you and drowns you in pain. Like that's what I want to do with my life. Like I, that's what I, and that's, it's not even that's what I want to do. That's what I am doing. That's what I'm forever going to do now. Like that's it. This is my life. And then it talks about who, what type of people do you want in your life? Do you want a partner in your life? Things like that what type of house what do you care for in a house what things would bring you joy and I had answers to everything which I've never had and that that's healing right right like that's that's what life's about it's about going through it being in pain and learning you're a badass after and when you learn you're a badass you just keep becoming a bigger ass <laughs> That's probably not the best way of saying that, but like you really do. Pain sucks and the life that you have to live, you shouldn't have to live it, right? Like you shouldn't have to, no one should have to live through pain. But we are also at the beginning of humanity to an extent. Like we have so many unanswered questions, so it can't be the end. I guess it really is up to you to believe whatever you want to believe, right? That I mean, that is what it is. But like, I choose to believe that we're just at the beginning and it's kind of everyone's job who is alive at all times to try and figure shit out together so that it becomes easier for each generation because what if we really do reincarnate, right? What if that really is reality? That means that you gotta come back to the mess that you left. So why not all work together? If you really do go to heaven or hell, like isn't the whole point of ending up in heaven to help others and to be loving towards every single human being alive no matter what? That's what I wanna do with my life and what I'm gonna do forever is I'm going to help people feel what I now get to feel. And you know what? What Maybe I'm manic, who the hell knows? Maybe I'm just, super psychotic. Maybe I'm making it all up and I'm lying.
lying to myself. There's so many things this could be, but the reality of it is, is that it's happening regardless of whatever it might be. And if I create some good throughout it and then end up in a mental institute, then cool. I still created some good. And then I end up at a mental institute to heal myself again and figure it out again. That's the point of life to fall and get back up. And I've been told that by so many professionals and so many teachers and I mean, teachers are also professionals, but I meant like mental health professionals. And then I said teachers, even though teachers in a way kind of have to learn a lot about mental health. And at least my teachers were, you know, my counselors at the same time. Um, unfortunately, so sorry to any teacher who might be watching now. I'm so sorry to everything that I put you guys through. But like, that's life. That's life. And I'm really happy to be a part of it now. I'm really happy because I get it. Like, I don't get life. I don't understand where we come from. I don't understand any of that. But I do get it because I'm on the other side of the pain. I'm still in pain, but I'm not in as much pain. And I can look back and see the pain I was in and look at the pain I'm in now. And I'm like, oh, I can handle this. I can handle this. Like, if I did that, I... I got this. And it's beautiful. It's so freaking cool. The brain is so fascinating. Like I am baffled by the experience that I have been getting to live in these last two weeks because I decided to face myself because I decided to sit with my feelings and look at all the reasons why I hate myself and either agree. Yeah, you know what? You suck for that. But you can heal that. You can fix that. You can't fix what you've done, but you can make sure it never happens again. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to come of my page. I don't know if I'll, you know, what next YouTube video I'll make. Hopefully I make another one every week now, but I probably won't. But I'm excited and I want to share that excitement. I want to share what my therapist has been trying to tell me for so many years because it really is. It's so different. And that's my update. You know, my update is I'm struggling, but I'm succeeding. I'm succeeding. I'm winning. I, I got my life back. I got control of my life back. It is no longer in the hands of all the people who have ever hurt me. It is no longer run by them. It is 100% my life. Well, I should say ours, but I am practicing. But yeah, I'm excited. So I'll see you guys next time. I might be in total mental chaos. I might still be well. Don't know. Mentally, I should keep saying I'm gonna be fine, but I'm also being realistic. It's the first time I felt this good. So I'm going to give it probably three months of feeling this good. That's been my new cycle. About three months of greatness, two weeks of falling apart, and then another three months of greatness. You know what? But I did just heal a really big part. So maybe now it's going to be like six months of greatness and like one week of falling apart. You know? Always better. See you guys next time. Mwah. Oh, what am I supposed to say at the end of YouTube? My little cousin is always like, uh, subscribe and save. No. <laughs> That's Amazon. Subscribe to my, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you get notification ring bells, notification bells, notification, some, uh, notifi notified when I post. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, share, comment, comment on my YouTube, right? S share, subscribe, comment. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Bye.